Hello and welcome to Zabio Arts. Thank you for taking the time to improve your art skills. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at 16 random drawing tips I wish I knew sooner, mostly focused on drawing anatomy. Oh, and if you haven't already watched my video on how to draw bases for your OCs yet, it's basically level one to this video. These tips will make a lot more sense once you know how to draw the basic proportions of your character super quickly. All right, let's go. Number one. Tease on the arms. Ooh, we're teasing these arms. I know Proko has a wonderful, beautiful, amazing video that goes into super detail on the muscle structure of just the arms specifically, but sometimes I just want to indicate the muscles and move on rather than making it 100% anatomically correct. So for this, we draw T's coming from the deltoids, the pecs, and the biceps. That's the shoulder, the flexy part of the arm, and uh, the chest. Once you get those T's in there, it looks correct enough to fool most people into thinking you studied anatomy, you liar. Number two, straight inner legs. This one's mostly for feminine legs and somewhat applies to masculine legs too. This technique of drawing feminine legs with a smooth line down the middle and bumps only on the outside is used a lot in cartoons because it passes for pretty accurate anatomy while also being super simple and fast to draw. Number three. Angry face, calves, and ankles. You know those bones that stick out of your ankle? I'm always hitting them on furniture. Well, anyway, they're not perfectly horizontal, and neither are the calves. The outside of the ankle bones is lower, and it's the opposite with the calves. So how do we remember this? Well, draw an angry face and see which is higher and lower. Easy and cute. Oh. Number four, belly button shapes. There are lots of ways to draw belly buttons, but I like to stick to two, vertical and horizontal. Vertical lines for the belly button imply that there is very little body fat, and horizontal belly buttons imply that there is either body fat or loose skin. Sometimes, if your character has a lot of fat, the belly rolls can actually have a line going all the way across from one side to the other, even passing directly through the belly button sometimes. Isn't that cool? Number five, feminine versus masculine legs. Besides the stuff that we already talked about in this video, there's another way to make your characters look more masculine or feminine, and that is where the outermost part of the thigh is. Feminine legs tend to have the outer part of their hot thigh higher, and it's a little lower for masculine legs. Oh, bonus tip. Drawing the legs more boxy can help your legs look more masculine too. Don't forget about that one. Number six, leg muscles. Without getting into too much boring detail about the structure of the individual leg muscles, here is a super rough placement of where those forms are. Notice the spot on the inner thigh that's kind of separated from the rest of those thigh muscles. The only th th lines that you should really ever have to make though is just a little one above the inner part of the knee and one going up on the inner thigh, and maybe one in the middle that's located where those red loopies come together. That's it. Number seven, knee lines. Knees can be a little tricky, but there's sort of a cheat to doing them that makes it look like you know what you're doing. When I'm feeling lazy, I, which is like almost every single time, I like to draw two squiggly lines so that the top part is wider and the bottom part is thinner. You can see by these red things, the structure underneath we're trying to imply here. And you may need to draw these squiggly lines more to the right or the left, depending if the leg is turned slightly. Number eight, muscle lines versus muscle shading. You don't actually have to always draw lines to indicate muscles. In fact, sometimes it's better to not draw the line and add some shading there instead. Lines are very harsh and abrupt. So if you want more subtle muscles, shading instead of lines is sometimes the way to go. Number nine, side view legs. This is one I see new artists getting wrong over and 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 over. Our legs are really weird. The shin goes way back and the thighs hang way over, kind of like T-Rex legs. So please, please, please keep that in mind. Oh, bonus tip. This one is a super good one. Alternate between straight and curved lines. This part especially makes you look like you know what you're doing even if you don't. And that also applies to other parts of the body as well. Number 10, light versus shadow. You've probably heard people say, where's the light source or define the light source, but what does that even mean? 
Using this same leg as an example, we can see that if our light is coming from the top, like the sun or something, the shadows would be underneath all the parts that stick out. And to find the parts that are lit up, we just do the reverse. It's all the parts that are sticking up facing the sky or facing the sun. This is why the shins are often in shadow when the person is standing straight. Number 11, gesture versus structure. These two are always fighting with each other and also working together at the same time. Gesture is all about looseness and breathing life and personality into your drawing. Structure is about adding the details of what's actually there. It usually helps to start with a loose gesture and then add structure to that later because adding structure almost always makes the drawing a little more stiff and lifeless. Number 12, simple versus complex side. Huge tip here, one that all professional artists use, especially people in animation. Balancing smooth sides with complex sides. Oh my God, it makes the drawing so juicy. There's something in our monkey brains that goes bananas when we see that. Look at other people's art and see if you can find the simple side and the complex side, especially animation drawings. Number 13, reach for the sky. There's actually like three tips in this one. So total throughout the whole video, there's more like 21 or 22. But anyway, when the arm is raised, the deltoid or shoulder muscle wraps around the arm and you can see that. Also, the pectoral or chest muscle goes up to meet it. The chest and the shoulder muscles are combined into one. The shape of the chest muscle also changes dramatically. This also applies to breasts as well. The nipple shape changes too. I know, right? It's part of the skin and the skin is being stretched. So of course it's gonna be squashed and stretched as well. We have stretchy nipples, my friend. Number 12, loose lines, no ruler. When I was starting out binging Mark Crilly and Jazz of drawing tutorials, I was so concerned with making each line perfect. And now I realize that using rulers and perfecting each line actually hurts my drawings in the end. There are times when it's good to spend a lot of time on one drawing. You can learn a lot from that. But there's also times when it's better to use that time making 20 bad drawings instead of trying to perfect one. Plus, you'll end up seeing shapes in the clouds, so to speak, using your mistakes to discover new things that you may not have consciously thought of before. So get super loose, let your lines go all over the place, and then find things that were not there in your brain before. Number 13, construction lines out of proportion. You can draw to the inside or the outside of them to make adjustments. This gets easier the more you draw, but it is such a dangerous move to have in your arsenal. Very effective and super time-saving. Number 14, easy bra and underwear. I discovered this one when I was drawing bodies for my last tutorial, but then I realized I had to cover them up for YouTube. The underwear can be a quick triangle, and then the bra is like a W shape at the bottom with a U going from strap to strap. Shade it in and you got yourself one modest mannequin, my friend. Number 15, V-shape abs. This one is so simple and sick, it's disgusting. Just above the hips, make some squiggles going down. Easy peasy V-shape, and that one little squiggle adds way more detail than it really should. Number 16, arm length. Even if the arm is bent, imagine straightening it out and putting it down to the side. The wrist should be about where the crotch line is. If you haven't already watched my how to draw bases for your OCs video yet, I recommend it. It's basically level one to this, and it makes this video make so much more sense. I wanna take a second to thank the sponsor of this video, my lovely supporters on Patreon and Skillshare. Skillshare has classes on stuff like drawing, illustration, painting, freelance, music production, all kinds of stuff. There's a class I always talk about by Vashti Harrison called Illustrating in Procreate, Creating a Shareable Time Lapse. It takes you through the whole process of creating an illustration step by step from start to finish. You don't need Procreate to do it and it's super beginner friendly. So if you like YouTube tutorials, but you want something organized like classes, the first thousand people to use the link in my description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. And you can cancel any time if you decide you just wanna stick with the trial. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video and thank you to all my lovely people on Patreon for sponsoring this video as well. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching, I appreciate you and I'm glad you're taking the time to improve your art skills. See you next time, bye bye.